And you keep saying, and I, I, I mean, I agree. I wish we could have Netanyahu as our president. But, you know, how would America react if... We are being invaded, and I just wish people would talk about our border the way at least people like you and I talk about, the way we talk about Israel's border. We need a Netanyahu here. Can you imagine all these? I mean, yes, sometimes Palestinian kids get killed. That's because they are they're, they're, they're associated government. with a terrorist organization that is harming Israel. And Netanyahu doesn't care what the religious leaders say, weeping about Palestinian children. He doesn't care what the UN says. He doesn't care what the media says. 2,000 Palestinians dead. Oh my God, oh my God. We declare war, we declare war. They started it. We now don't count who's dead. You're dead, you deserve to be dead. You started it. You started it. This is the most number percentage-wise of civilian Who cares? deaths. You know, they were told to get out. You don't get out, then you know you're an idiot. And at least the ones that were killed were the ones with very low IQ. But we also want it's a miserable life to live in, in, in a Palestinian country. You're living there with a bunch. They elected terrorists to run their country. That's the difference. Now, who do you, who do you support? Every patriotic American, Jew and non-Jew alike, must show their outrage that we will not tolerate propaganda and lies about Israel being the aggressors and suppressors of the Palestinians. It seems anti-Semitism is very much alive and finds a way to exterminate Jews with the help of ignorance and intolerance by teaching hate in their small children all over the world. Since Israel began its offensive in the Gaza Strip, more than 1,500 Palestinians were killed. According to Physicians for Human Rights, 83% of the casualties are civilians. On the Israeli side, 60 have died, 86% of them soldiers in combat. More than 10,000 homes and businesses here have been heavily damaged or destroyed in this 28-day war. Uh, the Palestinians report more than 1,800 deaths here and more than 9,000 wounded, many of them civilians. But of course, Israel blames Hamas for these civilian casualties. <laughs> Palestinian youths confronted one of the Israeli army's hated bulldozers. Israeli soldiers call it Dubi or teddy bear, but there's nothing cuddly about these specially modified bulldozers. Is justified for security reasons. They're also used in the construction of settlements and bypass roads, as well as Israel's controversial security barrier. At the same time, they have been used to uproot thousands of Palestinian olive and fruit trees. Hey Rick, when we first got on the ground, actually an Iron Dome, not the one we were at, took one of those rockets out of the sky. We heard the big explosion. Uh, we're going to go back to you later in the show. Rick Leventhal, thank you so much. So here we are, we are literally at the Gaza border and this IDF team just got back from a mission, successful, Dekel and Duron. Uh, you're pre he, he's from St. Louis, Missouri, right? I am. How did you get here? I moved here two years ago. Yeah. It's my dream to serve here. And uh, here I am. You're from Israel? I'm from North Carolina. You're from North Carolina? We had two Americans from over here. Why'd you come? 
is Lieutenant Libby Weiss, who interestingly is from Oregon, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, proud Oregonian. Uh, how long have you been with the IDF? Uh, just about three years. Okay. Now, nine operational. Uh, you're pre he, he's from St. Louis, Missouri, right? I am. But you're from Israel. I'm from North Carolina. Over here. You're from North Carolina. Yeah. We got two Americans from over here. Interestingly, is from Oregon, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, proud Oregonian. Uh, how long have you been with the idea? Ms. Thomas. Her initial reaction to the Portola massacre, deliberate massacre, an international crime, was pitiful. What do you mean you regret when something should be so strongly condemned? And if any other nation in the world had done it, we would have been up in arms. Well, what is this sacrosanct iron clan uh, relationship? We're, we're a country that deliberately kills people well, again, and boycotts, and we uh, aid and, and abet the uh, well, boycott. Uh, look, I think the, re the initial reaction... Uh, re this attack on Jews um, is unseemly, unfortunate, and she sits in the front row of the White House press corps, and the White House press corps has control. Over who sits I was going to ask you, you as the press secretary, no. don't decide where people sit? No, you can get involved if you want to. I think that was uh, not a good idea. So I stayed out of it and let them decide. And it's really based on seniority and how many people read your work or listen to your broadcast or watch your broadcast. And, well, uh, nobody's watching or reading no, Helen Thomas. No, Helen Thomas has a column that she does now once a week. Um, and. The fact that her comments were just so outrageous, and there's hardly been any commentary from her colleagues or, well, that Ari Fleischer, who was the first press secretary for President Bush, has said something, but not that many other people had. And if you just imagine... Well, I think he said she should lose her well, job. Well, he did, but other people outside of Ari and I have not really said anything. Well, do you think it, she should le lose her I seat think, I think that, that the White House press corps needs to take a really hard look at what they represent um, and who they are, and it could be time to let her move on. You just got out of Gaza? Yes. Well, tell us about the operation. How'd it go? It was very exciting. A lot of uh, pressure. Almost no sleep. The soldiers here are very... They are excellent. Now, this particular piece of machinery we are on, this goes in front of the tanks for the purpose of what? Okay, this monster clearing the path from my mines on the ground. Right. I guess on the first day we cleared around 50 mines or 50 bombs on the way to, to the attacking path. So literally this would hit a bomb, it would go off, and would the guys inside be protected? Exactly. How many friends did you lose? I specifically, in my department, I mean, no one, uh, everyone is okay. Have you lost any friends? No, sir. No. Now, earlier today, while we were near the Gaza border, a truck pulled up with a group of IDF soldiers who were responsible for protecting a kibbutz and patrolling the Gaza border. Now, here's what they think about this war. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey. Nice to see you. Doing okay? Nice to see you. Doing great. Hey, come on in. Come on. Sure. Say, say hi. Uh... What, what do you say to people that they, they make a moral equivalence between Hamas, which is a terror organization, and Israel, which only wants peace? You know, it's like surreal. All I can say is... Look at the pictures, look at the reality, you know? That's all I can say. Yeah. 3,000 rockets is a lot of rockets. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I was, yeah. yeah. It took a few years, but yeah, yeah I was. How does, how does, Israel seems to, and everybody that I've spoken to here seems to have come together as a country. You keep saying, and I, I, I mean, I agree. I wish we could have Netanyahu as our president, but, you know, how would America re- I grew up like that, you know, it's, it's not new for me. Yeah. 
How are you? you? You speak English, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What, what do you say to how important this operation is and to finish it? Such as the people that are coming out of the tunnel. And uh, I'm, as an Israeli and as an uh, IDF warrior, out of the tunnel and uh, I'm a, as an Israeli and as a and treat all the terrorists over there. How do you have peace with a group whose own charter calls for your destruction? Don't. It's you don't, yeah, exactly. It's, you don't. Not because we don't want to. We want peace. מקדשים את המוות, אנחנו את החיים. הם מקדשים את האכזריות ואנחנו את הרחמים. And coming up, the rise of anti-Semitism and radical Islam, both of them spreading across the globe. Well, does the rest of the world need to wake up to what's really happening where we are in Israel and how to deal with radical Islamists? You know, Israel, it's bad enough they're surrounded by Islamic Jihad and, and the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas and Hezbollah and ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Now you've got it in Europe and Africa and everywhere and they're surrounded as a country? And part of, part of this is the result of, of Hamas's policy of using human shields and causing the media to, to beam all around the world dead Palestinian children caused by their use of human shields, which incites hatred and incites violence against, against Jews around the world. They're, they're using Jews as proxies for their hatred. So you're saying that the, the propaganda campaign by Hamas has been effective in creating a backlash against the Israelis who are on the defending themselves. Does, By attacking does this remind you of, well, certainly the ideology, if you want to wipe Israel off the map, that that is the equivalent of want, wanting a modern day Holocaust. So from the, the perhaps the even bigger threat that they face of Iran. Yeah. All right, General. Uh, Colonel, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you your time much. with thank us. You. All right. Uh, that is all the time we have left this evening. I want to give you one programming note. Tune in tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back here in Israel. I will sit down with a one-on-one -on -one, and we will be interviewing Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Again, that's tomorrow night, 10 Eastern, right here on the Fox News Channel, from the Iron Dome, which is right behind us. And you keep saying, and I, I, I mean, I agree, I wish we could have Netanyahu as our president, but, you know, how would America, how would America, how would America, how would America, I wish we could have Netanyahu as our president. Uh, he, he's from St. Louis, Missouri, right? I am. How did you get here? I moved here two years ago. Yeah. Tell us about, you're from Israel. I'm from North Carolina. Originally. You're from North Carolina? We got two Americans from over here. Why'd you come? It's Lieutenant Libby Weiss, who interestingly is from Oregon, right? Yes, yes. Uh,